Hello and welcome to the 18th meeting of the Top Shelf Society. Today we are excited to be discussing probably one of the most like renowned dark academia books of all time, right? Like the one that kind of started it all and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, before we go into discussions about that, I would like to give a little bit of information about our next book that we're going to be reading, which is perfectly themed for the holidays. Um, and it is Christmas something, Christmas Day? Yes, Christmas Day. Christmas Days. Okay, Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson. And our live show for that, go ahead and mark it in your calendars, will be um, Wednesday, December the 29th at 1230 EST. And if you guys haven't noticed, our live show times have kind of changed, at least for the next couple of few ones we'll be having. So a lot of my like UK people who weren't able to join in the past, like it should work for you now because it would be like five year time, I think. So anyways, um, we will go ahead and do member intros and then we will get into it. Uh, Laura? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Laura. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I have a channel called Laura Reads Pages that um, I have been updating, so you should check that out. And um, I apologize in advance if I talk too much. I'm, I have a lot of thoughts about this book, so I'm really <laughs> excited for us to, to get into it. Um, yeah. Yay. Um, I'm Sarah, and so I'm from, uh, what's my, <laughs> Sarah's Reading Nook, and um, I haven't been on very much during the month of November. November was a very hectic month, but uh, I'm very happy to be here, and also for, I don't know if you guys are doing book miss, but I'll be doing some book miss stuff, not like, not like too intensely, but just like, I want to do a couple of things like a video on the Grinch and just a character analysis and um, that sort of thing. So I'll be doing some book this. Um, that sounds and, so fun. Yeah. And uh, I live for Christmas. Like my entire year revolves around Christmas. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I read books with my cat. And that's about it. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> totally forgot I did that. Okay, um, I'm Stephanie, and my channel is Stephanie's Book Burst. And um, yeah, I I read a lot of <laughs> fantasy, but I do throw in other stuff as well. So yeah, she has a really awesome TBR game. You all should check it out. It's, it's really so cool. much fun. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. And she has a whole playlist so you can binge it. It's fun. I know. I, it's <laughs> getting longer. I was like, dang, we're coming up on a year. That's crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm Kristen. And um, I have been pretty active on my other channel recently just because I've been focused a lot on writing. Um, that channel is Kristen and her books. If you're interested, just search it. You'll see me there. Um, I've been really busy this November with NaNoWriMo. I did attempt daily vlogs for like two weeks and I'm like 4,000 words away from reaching the 50K word count goal. So I'm a little behind, but like I'm almost there. That's so close. Yeah, I know. I know. And, so I, close. and I started like six days late. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's well, amazing. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us so far. Um, hello. Thank you for your kind words. And hi, Becca. And hi, Angela. We wish you were here, but we hope you feel better. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably should explain. Angela is not feeling well, so she can't join us today, but she's here in the comments. Okay, so uh, to begin, we normally give a synopsis of the book. Does anyone want to kind of tell us what it's about? I, I can because I've been describing it to a lot of people lately. Um, but it's been described as a reverse murder mystery in that you know who commits the murder. And the question is whether or not they're going to be, get away with it. Um, so it's based, it's a group of friends, university friends in, would you say the 70s? 
maybe. the 70s? I think so. Um, I thought so, it was more modern. I don't know why. Well, well the they mentioned hip, they hippies. Or, yeah, I feel like like the pens they use in things kind of makes me feel like it's a little bit older. Is that? Did anyone else kind of feel that way as well? It's definitely set like in the recent past. Like they're listening to like yeah. vinyl and stuff. Yeah, I think I I I had in my head that it was the seventies. Okay. But okay. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm anyway. gonna Google this. Continue, Laura. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, they talk about like hippies, like it says as if it's they're set in the nineteen eighties. Okay. 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 Um, so, which I think is very close to the seventies. <laughs> Good <laughs> deduction. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Donna Tart went to. She was at university in the eighties. I remember reading, so that makes sense. Um, but anyway, it is about a group of college friends in a small um, Vermont but, um, university, and who are studying the classics and. No spoiler, because it's literally revealed on the first page that all of these friends get together and murder one of their number, and you don't know why. So the first half of the book is the lead up to the murder, how they get from the point of being friends to all ganging up on murdering one of their number. And then the second half of the book is the fallout from this murder. And that's The Secret History by Donna Tart. Yeah, and Great. the book is kind of divided into a part one and a part two. Um, obviously, like, shifting around what happens after the murder, I guess. Very different kind of, like, tones and vibes. Like, I'm really curious to, to see what you guys thought about each part. I guess it's also important to say that it's all told from the perspective of um, Richard. What's his surname? I don't know. Anyway. Captain Pappen, yeah. Pappen. Richard Pappen, who is sort of new to this group of friends, um, and everything is told through first person, his, his perspective. And he's also a very sort of, like, um, of uh, the, the characters in the group are quite eccentric, and he is by, by far, I think, the most relatable. Um, yeah, I yeah. agree. I feel like he is, like, the bystander who sort of becomes incorporated almost like to me like Angela said that she felt like the characters were modern tragic Greek characters I totally agree with that um I feel a little bit like Richard reminded me of the main character in the Great Gatsby a little bit as well because he was a bystander and he was he was just like so enamored by this group initially and the farther you go he sort of changes perspectives a little I bit. totally see that comparison I hadn't thought of it but that I, there's yeah. so many influences in this book yeah yeah um that might be a good transition point actually because I wanted to talk with you guys about your thoughts on the characters there's a lot of different conclusions you could come to, feelings you might have about them. Um, so let's just open the floor for that. What did you think about the characters in the story? Were they likable, relatable? Did you have a favorite? Con I thought they were, <laughs> I thought they were extremely unlikable. <laughs> um, and I think obviously that's intentional. I, mm -hmm. I think it just shows like the, the flaws in the characters. Uh, very well throughout the book and sort of their downfall and the visage that they like portray like initially just sort of becomes destructed and destroyed the further you go and the more you just know about them and how they behave and act in certain situations. I, I'm gonna say the complete opposite. I <laughs> really love, <laughs> it's not really the complete opposite, you'll see I'm qualified, but I really okay. liked um, Richard. Like I really just I think at one point he says, I don't think I'm a particularly good person, but I don't think of myself as a bad person either. I just like, I really liked Richard and it made me really uncomfortable how much I liked him. And then because mm. I liked him, I liked the other characters, not because I didn't think they were flawed, but because he cared so much for the other characters. Um, and he was so enamored by them and we're always seeing them through his perspective. Um, so, and he, he, he sort of like loves them despite their flaws or almost like because of their, like their quirks and stuff. So um, with the exception of Henry, <laughs> 
I actually um, l I really felt I cared about, I guess. I don't know if liked, the one that who I really liked is Richard, but I really cared about all of them with the exception of Henry. You didn't like Henry. I did not like Henry, okay. yeah. yeah. Did anyone like Henry? I actually really did. I thought he was such a fascinating character. Like I didn't, I wouldn't want to be besties with him. I feel like that would make me a little bit in a bad situation. But yeah, I'd um, be concerned for you if you were Henry's yeah, friend. I, Very. I loved him. I thought he was one of the most fascinating of all the characters. Oh my gosh. He was so fun. Like he was so interesting. I yeah. thought he was fascinating too. I mean, I don't, I didn't like him as a person, but I also, I agree with you that he was so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He had that like kind of cold, intelligent, like Sherlock Holmes vibe. And I, I like that as well, but like his morals were all sorts of confused. They all were, except yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. Richard a little, little bit. He had a little bit better going for him and he was, I not think quite. he like, I think Charles did too. I, I, because we we saw inside Richard's head, but I think the only one who actually spoke up at any point to say like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do this is Charles, and I think he did it twice. Um, and I think he was the one most destroyed by it because I think that he, I think maybe he felt the most regret. That was my interpretation, but I don't know. I, th well, I, I did, but yeah little different like i agree that i think charles was more freaked out do we are we um spoilers, spoilers. are we doing spoilers yeah we can we can okay, okay uh, I, spoilers okay. if you made it this oh, far God. stop watching i don't know how in depth i'm allowed to go but yeah i feel like i felt like charles's morals were um very if he wanted them to be his morals type thing like he picked and chose on what he thought was morally okay and wasn't and honestly i feel like he felt pressure because he was the one getting talked to the most by the police and the fbi and all these people so i feel like he, i don't know if he felt more guilty or not i felt like he felt like there was so much pressure on him and that was really getting to him plus then the thing with his sister kind of tipped him over the edge. Like, I don't know what he would have been like if those things hadn't happened. I think that influenced how he reacted to it so much differently than the other people. I I also think he, the second half of the book, obviously you really, I, I, I you really like Charles changes, you know, and he like, you, you feel much differently about him than the first part of the book. Um, he does say on it like when for example they first encounter bunny's parents after bunny's body is discovered the he says like we did a bad bad thing um charles says um and that's sort of like yeah that's I mean, but little comments like that made me think that he was feeling remorse i'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure if he felt remorse or if he just acknowledged that it was a bad thing. Well, because he like, he goes so like emotionally unstable at the end. But my perspective was that it wasn't really because of guilt over what he had done with, with Bunny. It was because of Camilla and yeah. Henry. Yeah. That's how I felt about it as well. Oh. What do you think though? <laughs> You can yeah. have a different perspective. I don't think there's a right or wrong. No, no, I no. know, I know, I know. I I think it was about guilt, and I think he would okay. have. Re I think he drove Camilla to to Henry because he started like, you know, he was abusive towards Camilla, and so like she had, and I think she had been sort of seeing Henry for a while and. Char I think Charles kind of knew about it, but didn't like think too hard about it or didn't want, you know, want to see it. But I think when he was already kind of um, going through a really hard time, um, I think then he, that, like, then he responded to um, Camilla and Henry. Um, but what do you think, do you think Richard uh, was remorseful? 
I don't know. I think Richard kind of enjoyed the power feeling of it a little bit. Is that the right description of it? Like when he was talking to Henry about it and they were saying they were looking down on the body and that feeling almost of a little bit of a high from that, you know, that adrenaline, that rush that he didn't feel bad. He actually felt good. Like it made him feel good. And so I don't know. I think he did a little bit because he was saying towards the end of the book, he's like, the way I'm making you like making you think about Bunny, it's not exactly how he was like you don't get how like big of a personality he was and how when you were around him, like he was like, I don't know, he, like people liked him and he was easy to hang like have fun with and that type of thing. So I think a, he did a little bit because I think he probably liked Bunny a little bit better than the other people. But I don't think he actually felt bad about the murder necessarily as much as like losing those good parts of Bunny that he actually did enjoy. Yeah, I agree. I think um, there's this part where he's with the dad and the dad starts like crying and, and about how much he misses his son. And like, and um, Richard says something like, oh, and the gravity of what we did hit me or something. Like, I think that 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 part like affected him but I, and Angela says this and I think she's kind of saying like what we're saying too is that it's not really big regret for what they did kind of just how it inconvenienced them or how it made the good parts of Bunny go away I don't I actually think they all felt regret to a certain degree I think there's a I think there's a moment when um they realize uh, Francis and um Richard towards the end when Charles is in the hospital I think they realize how much they were under the influence of Henry and how much they fell into step with what he wanted from them and I think that I think that they all even though they don't what I like about Richard is he's so on like he seems really cold in his at, especially at the start I was like geez um but in, in his recount, but he's very honest. Like he doesn't, he doesn't try to make himself look better than try to look good, you know? Um, but I, I think that even though they never explicitly say it and we don't even really get it in Richard's thoughts, I think that they all felt regret. Like even at one point, Richard said, I wish, sometimes I wish Bunny would walk into the room. Like, I wish he were still alive today, you know? Um, and I can't imagine that, the, I, I imagined that um, also contributed to, like, Francis's suicide attempt later on. And the only one who I don't know about, and I feel like I, I, is Camilla. I don't really know how, like, how she felt I didn't, I didn't feel like we got quite as much of her as some of the other characters so i have a different i guess different take yeah and camilla is kind of an interesting character like to talk about and of course her whole relationship with charles is interesting to discuss as well um what was your reaction to their relationship I feel, I feel like incest is one of the things that I don't like in books. Like, I, I feel like I can go pretty dark, you know, like grim dark fantasy and like some dark horror and stuff. But ugh, incest just is something that is I don't enjoy in books. And so it always makes me dislike that aspect of it. And I don't, I don't know. I just I can't. Mm, I don't like it. I felt similarly. Um, I think though that, um, I don't know, in, is it Greek mythology or Roman mythology? Like I was trying to see, or like in culture, I was trying to see if like incest was actually like permissible or if it was um, something that happened frequently. Cause it just seemed like a lot of the characters, they wanted to live out ancient Greek life in modern day times. Um, and I, was trying to like look up that sort of part of it but what well, I, I found think... was that it wasn't but it like it wasn't it was still like taboo um but 
it happened kind of frequently. Um, I think a lot of ancient reading. cultures or, or just ancient societies in general, incest was more permissible. Like, I mean, yeah. the royals married their siblings or first cousins constantly. It was like, it was something that was very much done a long time ago. So, yeah, I'm not saying that their, it, that their relationship is because they wanted to, um, like, mirror the Greek culture. But I wonder if just Donna Tartt put that in there um, to sort of, like, I don't know, reference I, that aspect. I don't know. Yeah, I sort of agree with both of you in that I was like, is the incest necessary? I mean, this is plenty dark already. And it didn't seem to, like, put forward. It didn't. I don't, I didn't know why it was there. Like it didn't, I don't know. I, but anyway, I, I do, I think if, if it was there for any reason, it may be like you said, um, to make more parallels with, um, antiquity. But I, I think just in the first half of the book, you don't get an idea of how traumatized and like kind of damage the characters are and you, it sort of it starts coming out and the fallout from the murder um and that you know the twins parents died in a car accident when they were very young and i imagined that the incest had been like some like psychological result of that and of having had to have been very close because uh, they their parents died but anyway and then richard's father having been abusive and um well, Francis having been sent to different uh, like um, rehab kind of centers or homes where he wasn't treated very well. Um, and I don't really know the background of Henry, but basically all of them went through a lot of trauma. Um, and with the exception of Bunny, Bunny was the only one who, though he was like kind of heinous in some ways in terms of like he was ra like racist and misogynist, and, but he was the only one who came you know, from a, like a loving family and a, and a background. However, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah so they were kind of messed up. Yeah, yeah, weren't they? yeah I, I think family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but anyway, I I I think that um, that they were vulnerable. They were young, like twenty, and they were all vulnerable and like need wanted to. They needed each other, or like didn't you know didn't really have anyone else so they were willing to do this to fall in with the group and even didn't regret it because at one point Richard says like I think he said one of the positive things for for me was that this event had brought us all together and because of it we we would be sort of inseparable not insepar inseparable, but no one else would be able to completely understand us in the world except for each other because we can't confide this event in anyone else. Um, and then there's one point where there's, we're sort of like learning about how to kind of not in good shape some of the, the like uh, Francis is or Charles and Richard is suddenly feeling the opposite, like, oh my God, I'm tied to these people and it's such a mess. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. what, were, what were you gonna say, Sarah? Oh, I don't interrupt you. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was important. Yeah, yeah. No, but you're right. Bunny's family was they weren't. It, you, you're right. He wasn't completely uh, sunshine oh, yeah. and daisies either. Yeah, I think that Bunny being cut off <laughs> completely and having to fend for himself and you know being sort of a kind of kleptomaniac I don't know and having to just definitely surround it. not just kind of yeah, yeah. he I, stole I that know. girl's cake or her cheesecake or whatever it was in the fridge and I there know. was a note a note clearly said do not steal this cheesecake and what did and he, he do did. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I don't know I think I think bunny kind of um <laughs> I think that kind of contributed to how <laughs> how he acted and behaved and what he needed to do to like they they I, I think that his family sort of like he he described them as like portraying themselves as just like really wealthy and well off and so he wanted to do that however he was cut off financially so he continued to do that and I do think that was not right <laughs> yeah I guess what I mean is he was the only one that Richard to a certain extent, but not as much, but he was the only one that sort of like had 
connections outside of the group or like had, a, and that's why I guess he was the biggest threat to them um, because he didn't like need them as much as, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So while we're still talking about um, characters, did any of you like Bunny? <laughs> like like him as a person? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess that's like a vague, it's definitely a vague question. Like, would you, did you feel I, sympathy for, are there any redeeming aspects? Of I absolutely fe felt sympathy for, for him. I okay. really like, I, especially Richard felt sympathy for him and we were seeing it through Richard's eyes. So I, I like, there was one part where I just la I actually laughed out loud and it was the part where they were talking about the essay that he submitted where he didn't talk. I, oh, I can't remember. I'm going to look it up because I actually was like crying laughing from that. That part. was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I just think he was, a he, he, he was a bit of like, a, like, a does it like he, he was almost like, endearing in the in the way that he struggled and i i think uh he you know wasn't a great person but he that was also just you know what had been modeled for him for his whole life and he just he just <laughs> didn't have a lot going for him in some way so yeah i used a red highlighter like when whenever i like feel a very strong emotion i use a red highlighter and there were so many red highlights from whenever bunny would talk because <laughs> of his comments and how like misogynistic and sexist and um, racist <laughs> and just all of the comments so there was a whole lot of red but still and i don't think that he acted in a very sympathetic manner for most of the time but i don't think he was deserving of death like and it just one of the things that frustrates me about the book is this sort of lack of accountability like actual like true accountability about what they did to bunny and i don't know that that breaks my heart so much um it just yeah a lot of self-serving behavior in this book and i think that you know, killing, killing Bunny, I, I guess I could understand. I, but I just, I don't think that was the way I don't think that was right. And I feel like they all felt like it was their only option. But yeah, I don't think I don't think Bunny deserved what happened to him whatsoever. No, I don't either. Um, I feel like when I think of Bunny, like, even though he was, like, 25, the way he acted was so childlike. Like, it was almost like, like, the way, like, I started to expect him to behave this way because maybe there was something, like, in him that stunted his development or something that kept him from, like, being capable of mature behavior or, I don't know, like, whatever it was, like, I accepted him like as a child almost. And so um, it's just made that kind of murder even more poignant, I guess, because like, it was almost like they were like murdering a child in my head, even though he was older than them. Um, I felt, yeah, I felt that. It, that's what I think I meant when I said like, he was almost endearing in the way that he blundered and around. And um, I think, he couldn't keep up academically with the others. Um, and he, he wasn't as intelligent as the others. But then when you find the note that he left for Julian at the end, that they, they all had assumed that he was sort of obliv oblivious to their plots and that he, he, he was, um, I don't know. I, he, I, it sort of revealed that in the weeks leading up to his death, he was highly disturbed, like highly disturbed by yeah. what he'd done, but by what they'd done, highly just, yeah. I mean, it's disturbing to have all your friends and all the people that you trust show up covered in blood. Um, and like, I, I think that really disturbed him. And I think he was really s scared. Like he knew that Henry wanted to kill him. Um, so that almost, he's more aware than, they thought he was um mm -hmm. yeah and um, angela makes a good point 
about how he said uh, she says that money was cruel and calculating that is a, a good point I, mean, I can't deny that like he was very yeah. cruel and calculating at times um but I still think that like compared to like a 25 year old normally like there was something very like young about him like undeveloped I don't know Stephanie, were you going to say something? I I actually agree quite a bit with Angela. I I felt like he was cool and like he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what to say to make them feel bad. He knew exactly what to do to hurt them the worst that he possibly could and to use them and manipulate them and to get what he wanted. And he was doing like when he was making Camilla iron his shirts because she's a girl, like he knew what he was doing. He's he's more mature just because he's not smart academically and he doesn't do well academically. He knows exactly what he's doing. So I I didn't feel like he was just like cute in the way he was doing his things like I, I felt like he knew what he was doing like he, he was actually quite intelligent when it came to manipulating he just wasn't good academically and when I say childlike I do not mean cute like I do not condone at all anything that Bunny did like he was disgusting and in, in most everything he did and it was horrific <laughs> but um like as like um a, a, I've seen children like mimic behaviors that others have done like in front of them and like as a child they'll they'll say something hateful or spiteful or racist or whatever because they've seen their parents do it without like really understanding the implications of what they're saying and um there was this moment with like bunny talking about how like it was so awful if you stole something from other people and like like demeaning people who stole while like at the same time, like he did it, but like in his brain, the way that Richard was talking about it, like he didn't make the connection between like he stole things and stealing was wrong, which is, I feel like kind of backs the point that like, there was just some kind of like disconnect. Like I I I think think that he was kind of like emotionally immature. So I don't know if emotional is the right term, but he could never, he wasn't someone who could plan ahead or could see the consequences of his actions. He was like manipulative and he did things, said things to set people off, but he just did what it came to him in the moment. And what, if he was feeling angry, he behaved like he lashed out at people. If you, you know, he didn't, he didn't have um, a lot of like consciousness of he was just sort of floundering, you know, around and doing a lot of harm that way. But uh, like, I, I don't know. He seems to like be like Donald Trump or someone. He just like does what it, whatever horrible thing comes into his head, you know? Um, yeah. In the moment. Yeah. 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 I see that comparison. Um. Okay. Do we've covered a lot of the main characters. Do we want to talk about Julian or Camilla? Mm. I'm really interested to hear what people have to say about Julian. Okay. Well, I'll go first if that's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I I don't I don't like him. I mean, I like the idea of him. Like everything about Dark Academia, I love. I love the like the the clothes and the focus, like the aesthetic with the intelligence and the study. Like I love all of that. But I feel like Julian kind of represents like the dark underbelly of academia that like even I noticed in college where like it's all about appearance and and there's like this dark underbelly of just selfishness and like only caring about your 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 image underneath like this like glorious like mirage of intelligence and um beautiful things I feel like Julian um well, Richard says it best at the end. He's talking about how Julian kind of like manipulated these children and like preyed on their weakness and their desire to be different and stand out from everyone else by like only having the small group and telling them that they're special. And I feel like Julian kind of contributed in a way to Bunny's murder, I think. Yeah. So I don't like him. <laughs> 
Oh uh, yeah, I thought he. I uh, up until very late in the book was convinced that it was going to be revealed that he was involved in the murder, or that, it, like, in fact, he had been with them at the what's that thing called? The bar Bacchanalia. Bacchanalia or something. Like, I was convinced that that was going to come out, which it didn't. Um, but you're right. I think in a more subtler way, he he kind of reinforced the in group out group mentality that that they developed and the you know the making sacrifices to protect the good of the whole and that's what they felt like they were doing it in killing bunny and i think he he that the, they sort of intellectualized everything so so that bunny's murder became a it, it, they dehumanized it and and it became like an idea to them instead of like especially henry was that sort of person they are uh, cal cold and calculating and he doesn't understand things other than through is as i intellectually as ideas um he's like very cold and calculating and doesn't have a lot of emotion and they often compare julian to henry um and then julian was his father figure to all of these kids who you know didn't have like strong parental figures in their lives so yeah i, I agree with Kristen. Any differing yeah. ideas, or are we all kind of in agree that we don't like Julian? I agree. Um, I don't know. Like Laura was saying, I kind of just was thinking the whole time that you know how they said that there was like a fifth figure or something like that during the event that happened. I kept thinking that was just Julian. <laughs> uh, I I feel like he was involved, but I think whether he was directly or indirectly involved. Um, I think that he still helped quite a bit when talking about the Dionysian like uh, mysteries and those sorts of things. I think that um, I think that putting them together and um, romanticizing um, these sort of like events, I think sort of affected them in some sort of way. Um, I forget what he says, but he talks about in like a class. Um, oh, I, I found the quote here. He says, uh, we don't like to admit it, but the idea of losing control is one that fascinates controlled people such as ourselves more than almost anything. All truly civilized people, the ancients, no less than us, have civilized themselves through the willful repression of the old animal self. So he creeps me out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just the um, idea that he wanted full control over them, you know? Like, he wouldn't let them take courses from other professors. Like, he wanted... Yeah. He, it was sort of an arrogance where he thought that if he could be the one to shape these young people, that would be the, you know, the, it's, it's a very sort of, like, creepy thing. Um, so creepy. Yeah. <laughs> And then at the end, he just like bounces out. <laughs> like, I know. Oh my gosh, whatever. Like you're, you're, go away then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I had any like um, mixed feelings about Julian, like his reaction to the whole like murder thing just kind of like cemented the fact that I didn't like him. And also like how horrible to have this like strange relationship that's like, paternal with these children who don't really have that figure and then just like you said bounce out of their life like in this yeah. moment I don't know yeah like <laughs> I don't know he, he just seems just so self-serving mm -hmm. it's just I hate I hated his character <laughs> so much yeah. he was almost like he was just so concerned with the store with stories and like how things looked or and you know, when they're talking about at Bunny's funeral, how him enjoying sort of the melodrama of it. And, and he, yeah. he liked the appearance and he, he thought it liked emotions in that, how, in how they contributed to like stories and not like, yeah, he just, yeah. Okay. And then, I also wanted to talk about what you thought about the whole Richard, Camilla, Henry, Charles, like, relationship 
thing? Did you feel pity for uh, Richard's unrequited love for Camilla? No. I think I did a little bit just because I, I think she let him on and she shouldn't have. Like, she kind of acted like maybe there was a chance there and stuff and there wasn't. So I, I don't know. I felt bad with, for him in that sense. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with her not wanting to be with him just because she was in love with Henry. That's fine. But yeah, I just think the way she treated him gave him the idea that, you know, maybe there is a chance here when there never was. And I felt kind of bad for him for that. (laughs) There was a scene when Camilla, it was sort of, it was revealed for the first time that Charles was abusing Camilla and, um, Richard reacts, he's angry at Camilla at this moment. And I'm just like, I was just so upset by that. And like the one moment, you know, she's, she's in a real, like an abusive situation. And she's now she's have to move in with Henry, who's like a psychopath. (laughs) And she's coming to you and you're angry with her. Like you're, to me, like Richard was the one person who could have saved her in a way. And I think he was angry because she chose Henry over him. And it was just around the time when, Francis, um, Richard, uh, were starting to think of Henry differently. And, um, it, and I think Richard was angry because like, yeah, because Camilla could have, you know, could have chosen him and I, I, and, but she was in love with, with Henry. And I think like, but that, that could have saved her if she had, I, I don't know. I, I have to think about that, but like, yeah. I don't know. I think she made her choice. Like she chose Henry. She loved him. So she wasn't forced to move in with the psychopath. Like that was her choice and that's what she wanted. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if Richard should necessarily been as mad at her as he was. I, but yeah, I think like she didn't, she didn't want Richard to save her. She wanted Henry to save her. That's who she wanted. That was who she chose. So, But I just think people, when you're in a vulnerable situation as Camilla was in, and they were all under Henry's influence at some point, and he was highly kind of manipulative. I just think that, um, like, I don't think that was a healthy situation. And I don't think it was like an informed or an, or a free choice that she made in that I think like, like, I think that um, they were all highly, like kind of highly disturbed at at that point. Um, I guess it, yeah. I guess it just depends on when she was in love with him. Like I'm, I felt like that was really unclear because when we were just getting Richard's perspective, like I, I was thinking, okay, like they, they're starting to get a thing going on. Um, but like it never develops. And so like, how long did Camilla love Henry for? Cause like, I didn't see much of it. I think she did for a really long time because before they were saying that they kind of had a thing before Richard showed up. At, like Henry was totally in love with her, but she wasn't doing anything because I think a lot of it was because of Charles, which is, Charles. but then, I mean, even after they've all graduated and it's years later, she's still in love with him. And I mean, I, I just, I think she was, I think she was honestly in love with him and yeah, he was super manipulative and stuff, but I, I, don't, I think she probably knew him better than a lot of people did. It seemed like they had a lot going on behind the scenes that we didn't even know about i also agree that she was probably seeing henry for a lot like a long time there are kind of like little hints throughout the whole book that she is um but i I don't know they all describe at one point they all describe loving henry like francis does richard does camilla does i don't know about charles but like they all describe loving henry and it's this infatuation that that's almost like echoes like how they all feel towards Julian like I don't I don't know like I saw see it more as like I I almost thought of it more as like a cult kind of situation with Henry as the cult leader (laughs) yeah yeah and I think it's it's interesting that like 
all of these characters like have kind of the same like flaw the same like um I don't know if they're like ability to romanticize things so much or like this desire for like story and intrigue and like the dramatics or whatever um but I guess that that's what drew them to study Greek like I was wondering about like the influence of like their choice to study Greek based off their like personality because they they do have a lot of like weird similarities and I feel like most people like notice similarities they have with people among their same major right the same uh, kind of personalities I don't know no I totally agree like when they were talking about death in general and they're all kind of fascinated by it and they aren't as creeped out by the fact that they murdered someone and then when they're doing the search and Julian's looking over at the scene of everyone out on the snow searching (laughs) and he's like Mm, this is kind of, I like I like this and, <laughs> and Richard's like me too I'm like y'all got issues <laughs> <laughs> but they talk about it in Greek class yeah. too about how about how death is like beautiful like mm-hmm. the most beautiful thing and I, I guess we just see that like weird idiosyncrasy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's true <laughs> okay <laughs> Oh, sorry. I kind of have a question. Did anyone have any theories about like where the story would go? Because like I, I had a theory about how it would go, and I was wrong. But I actually kind of think it would have been kind of cool my way. Like, did what's your else way? I had a theory as okay, well. Okay, tell which us. I'm share after okay. you. <laughs> so mine, guess. I thought what was going to end up happening is they killed that guy in the woods, and it's. It sounded, when Henry was talking about it, it sounded like he did a significant amount of this killing of this guy, if not all of it. You can't really tell, but when he, he said it before, like, when I killed the man. So, and then they killed Bunny, and that was Henry's plan. I think Henry executed it a significant amount. Like, he was pretty, like the core person on that and then when like I thought he was gonna start picking them off one by one he was just gonna start killing them all and at the end because we were hearing it from Richard's perspective I thought I thought Richard was gonna be the last one left and know that Henry was coming for him and like we were just kind of like watching him sit there wait for Henry to knock him off too I was I I thought that might happen as well too Yeah. yeah but it wasn't that kind of Anything, but right. I love that too. I you weren't that, that far off in that. Can you like I think, Charles, <laughs> I think Charles thought that Henry was going to kill him at the end. Like I think oh, Charles was at the I place. I thought Henry that, was going to kill Charles. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think Henry uh, Charles was at the point that Bunny was at the end of his life. Like mm-hmm. Bunny was completely disturbed and thought that um, that 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 Henry was coming to kill him. And I think Charles thought so. And maybe we don't know if what Henry intended, maybe he didn't. I think Henry would have. And then I think if Julian hadn't left him, he might've done some other messed up stuff. I think that changed him a lot. Yeah. This, so I, I thought, I thought, cause the, the, the description of the first murder was so weird. And you're right that it was described that Henry did some of it, but then Camilla had no blood on her except blood in her hair. And we knew she was running out front. So I had some sort of idea that like Henry and Camilla committed the murder somehow. (laughs) And that actually Charles and Francis weren't involved and that Henry was trying to protect Camilla or some, like, I don't know. I had, and I thought Julian was more involved and, um, yeah, I said, um, or that like Camilla saw that Julian was there and Henry was was putting pressure on her not to tell. I don't know. Anyway, what, what did Angela say? I missed that. Okay. She thought that Bunny was alive and was just messing with them to mess up their lives. I'm like, that would be a fair play. And Becca agreed. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Um, this was my second time reading it, so, like, I knew everything that happened, but I had actually forgot about the way, I don't know how I forgot this, but I forgot that Henry shot, um, himself at the end. Was anyone surprised by that, like, or did you see that coming? I saw it coming. I think I saw it coming towards that end, Mm -hmm. but I didn't really leading up to it, like, I, I didn't call it 
a long ways in advance, only kind of towards the end. Yeah. I thought that they might all get together and, fr and frame Henry. But yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't sure either. Yeah, and then Becca brings up a good point after someone mentioned seeing Bunny outside the bank. <laughs> like, Donna Tart totally could have gone in that direction, you know, and had Bunny still be alive. Um, I kind of thought that, um, what's his, uh, Cloak might have been, is that his name? Yeah, Cloak. Mm -hmm. I thought Cloak, um, sort of towards the end, I had this theory that Bunny had told him, like, everything and so cloak was going to just sort of um we were just going to sort of know that and i thought cloak was going to like kind of take them down but that didn't end up happening <laughs> and i just because i wanted them to be so badly i just wanted like i i i can see that all of their lives sort of became like tragedies towards towards the end and nobody lived like nobody seemed happy in the end like even Henry come like going back in the dream he wasn't even happy in his little like um afterlife sort of area so like I feel like none of them were like truly like happy in the end and that this was like a tragedy to all of them um so I guess that was how karma worked in this case I don't know. But do you wanted them to be found out. I wanted them to be saying? found out so bad. I just wanted them to be held accountable in some sort of way. See, I, I, I thought. And, and my other my other hope was that Richard had, like, created a book that was to be distributed or something. And mm -hmm. so that he would, he would be the one revealing what they had done because he felt remorseful. But that didn't happen. So. See, I, I didn't want them to be caught. And I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I liked them either. too. Yeah. yeah. I wanted them so badly. Uh, I didn't like any of them. Oh, well, Sarah, Sarah is Enneagram one. Okay. All of yes. She's very justice. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm very justice based. Yeah. Oh, see, I, especially Richard, I didn't, I thought at some point that maybe everyone would be found out, but they would all, they wouldn't. Uh, Richard wouldn't be implicated because, for example, the plane tickets, there there was no plane ticket ever bought for Richard. So I thought maybe that they, they might all go to prison and, and but they might like get together and protect Richard and have him walk free. free. But anyway, I didn't I, I I didn't think Henry should be loose in the world. I, I thought he was very dangerous. Yeah. But um, it's so funny though because I just every time I think of him I think of him in his garden just with his little gloves like pruning some <laughs> bushes the leaves, like, yeah. 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 Like, the soil. <laughs> and like what? in his mind he's like planning the murders like who's coming next <laughs> well and he yeah has the plants that he picked on the day he murdered his friend and just planted them in his garden I'm like yeah, where they get the, yeah. Leaves from? Yeah. Like, where they get the laurel leaves from? <laughs> from Henry? Like, what else was he growing in that garden? <laughs> Here is my next victim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I don't think he should have been out in the world. Like, I, I would have rescued him if he, he were in prison. But the other ones, I really think that had they not been caught, I don't think that they will. I don't think they would murder again. The others. I don't think so. I don't, I, 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 I like, I, I think, I think they were all pretty, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think that they would all be safe in society. And um, that's my Enneagram one. Thank I you. think they would have been. She especially, showed up today. Especially Richard. I don't think he would be a threat to society. Especially. Richard. I do. I agree with I, you, Laura. I do. I, do. I, I, <laughs> so I just think that, um, that Henry just like manipulated them a lot, but I think that it does show poor character that they went along with everything. And I mean, like Donna Tart did a really good job in my opinion of making Bunny feel really annoying. And like, I felt like all of the tension and like that they felt and the repeated like annoyances that they caused, but like, even if that happened, like, my mind would never go to murder. Like, I would be like, okay, I'm dropping this friend. We're not hanging out anymore. That's it. Bye. See, I, I <laughs> drop someone when they're blackmailing you because you murdered That's true. Someone. I don't know. <laughs> you fess up? <laughs> like, I don't know. You just fess up to what you did because you killed someone. I, I just find it's so morally, like, just 
gross that like the way to get out of murdering someone is to murder someone else like it's just i can't oh it is with that. of course it's morally messed up oh, yeah, yeah but that's the point. <laughs> don't worry we don't think it is permissible i think it's totally morally okay so <laughs> let's <laughs> make this clear yeah, no. <laughs> no but i wish i could honestly to honest to god like i wish i could see it the way that you do sarah because then this book would have been way less disturbing to me if I thought that these characters... We'll, we'll get to, like, whether or not this is a top-shelf book. <laughs> you yeah. still have that feel. But but I... If this if I had thought that they all deserved to be in prison and that um they were all, like, villains and I couldn't relate to... Like, if I saw them like that, this book would not have disturbed me as much. But because I liked Richard, because I could see mm. myself making the choices Richard made, because I, like, felt affection for the other people in the group in the way that Richard did because even though I knew that Richard would be better off like hanging out with Judy Pooby or like just leaving those people I didn't want him to because like like I was rooting for their friendships but so because I almost felt blackmailed like I'm black brainwashed not blackmailed I almost felt brain brainwashed and like if if I believe that Richard deserved to go to prison, then this book wouldn't have deserved, wouldn't have disturbed me so much. Yeah, very well said. Because yeah. I, that was how I felt too. Okay. People in the comments, what do oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> and oh, I then, saw Becca's. She thought that Richard was going to be framed and he was writing it from prison. That would have been cool too. I, I, I also got that, that too. crossed yeah. my mind too because because at one point like they all have an alibi except for Richard and then and then also at, towards the end Richard is doubting why Henry got him involved like there was a specific yeah. reason that, and I think it was it could have been to, for him to be the one to take the fall if they needed someone to take the fall so I also thought about that the first time I read it that's what I was thinking oh and okay never mind I was gonna give you spoilers for another book um but I, I will I will not do that. I did you guys feel like the strong similarity between the maidens too? Like I feel like the yeah. maidens pulled from this a lot. Yeah, I thought it 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 seemed like a yeah, it took a lot from this book. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought this as well. Yeah, I felt that Angela, yes. It's like you read my mind. <laughs> um so if we were villains is like a dark academia book um it's kind of like shakespearean based mm -hmm. and um it's i loved it as well i wouldn't i don't know maybe i loved it more but like i really love theater so i feel like that could have been why yeah. um and then angela said earlier i feel like this book had you waiting for plot twists but it was like nope just awful tragic people yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah, <laughs> but then it's like so gray because like Laura was saying I didn't feel like Richard was a truly awful person like he just did some bad things okay let's see what do you guys feel like it was Top Shelf Society comments people oh should we guess what everyone's gonna say as well okay yeah. guess who's gonna, um... I think Sarah's gonna be a no I think Sarah's going to be a no. I think Kristen's going to be a yes. I don't know about you, Stephanie. I'm very on the fence. I feel like you and I are the ones that were like, ooh. But yeah, I agree. I think Kristen's a yes and Sarah's a, oops, Sarah, what about, Sarah's what a no. About, what about Angela, even though she's not here? I think Angela's a yes. I think Laura's a yes. I think Kristen's a yes. And I think Stephanie's a yes. <laughs> you think it's really? unanimous? What? You think it's unanimous? That's I didn't say that. I didn't say it's unanimous. I just said everyone. I'm also going to say that Stephanie doesn't think it's top shelf. I think Laura thinks it is because of the way it was written and how it manipulated her feelings and her emotions and the way she thought about characters. Because that's impressive when authors can make you root for people to get away with murder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, people in the comments. I think we have Angela and Becca still here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know what people uh, Yeah, I want to know what you guys predict. Think. Yeah. We'll have to wait the pause, you know, <laughs> until it pops up on our screens. <laughs> oh, I have a question. 
if you were to um if you if you were to pair up the characters with like a greek figure mythological or whatever what who would you pair together oh i don't know greek very well so i don't know if i would (laughs) Um, this, maybe I'm completely wrong in this. This probably shows my ignorance, but Icarus is the one who like flew too close to the sun and perished, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Henry all the way is Icarus. (laughs) Yeah. In my mind. Okay. Or it could be, it could also be Richard. If like, you could kind of argue different points there. Yeah, I I think think either for sure. This reminded me of how, when we read Song of Achilles, some people liked Achilles and some people really thought he was despicable I think he's a little bit like these characters in that he does what he needs to to fulfill his he he's not really acting of his own completely of his own accord because like the fates are telling him to do this but then he also kind of is so you're like a little bit morally ambiguous I think Um, he could have been someone maybe Charles mm mm-hmm I forgot that we, yes, I made a big note that I wanted to talk to you guys about the pacing of this book. So we know how Angela feels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what does everyone else feel? I, I think it was a brilliant example of holding tension. It's a huge book and there was no moment where I wasn't like, like feeling the tension. Um, so I think, that is was it a huge? writer craft. Where's that book? Yeah, it's like I think it was like five hundred and something pages. Huge. But I, yeah. but yeah. So I'm gonna look it up on for Stephanie. That's nothing. I was gonna say like I read it. <laughs> like that's like nothing for Stephanie. Day and a half. Really? Oh, oh my, my god! Goodness. No, it took me forever. I, I read yeah. it very quickly, so I don't think it felt slow to me. A, I, if I would have taken my time, maybe it would have a little more. I don't know. But no, I, just I don't think it. it was slow. Yeah, I don't think it was slow at all. I just meant it was like, like physically it was thick, but it was Mine like- was pretty thin. I don't know if you watched my vlog when I bought this, but they have different sizes of it. There's one that's hmm. chonky and then there's one that's little. You say chonky? I chonky. did say chonky. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's crazy how big the difference is. Like one's this big and one is like little. And I got I got the littler one ah. because does it, it have like small big. font? No, it just has better pages. Huh. Like um, the pages are different. Yeah, and it's I a heard... floppy paperback, like really floppy and nice. Yeah, yeah that's what I would have gone for too. You yeah. want to grab? The yeah, um, I I agree with person. Angela. I thought this was way too long. <laughs> it's the one for in... me. Nope. It read extremely yes. slowly. Like it what? was not as whatsoever. Oh my god. I'm serious. I'm serious. It was so slow for me. It took forever. I was just like, can you just like condense this? Like, I don't even know how many pages it was because I read the ebook. Can you just like condense chapter five to not be like five times the size of a regular chat like it just was <laughs> it, it was it took me forever yeah. okay my true colors are coming out even though they were pretty true before but oh my gosh it took forever they could have sliced and diced it like seriously <laughs> too that, long that's why I asked you guys about part one and part two earlier because my personal opinion I flew through part one I thought it was like expertly paced except for some of those like idyllic moments where they're like out in the cabin like I mean some of that could have been cut out but like overall I thought it was really good and then I thought part two was like really lazy and like could have been tightened up so much more uh part two drug for me dragged along for me for a while um and so part- yeah part two also dragged a little bit for me but I think it was more just like it was just the character suffering. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to be here with their suffering for so long, you know? So, uh, but yeah, I, I did not interpret it as slow totally. pace at all. I thought totally it was Angela. Bad. That's yes. true. That's true. The popsicle yes. stage did, it was kind of irrelevant. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. I just read it so quickly. I feel like I didn't like. I do agree with you on those. <laughs> like objectively, I look at it. I'm like, time in the winter could have been cut. A lot of the time afterwards, where Charles was going crazy, could have been cut. A lot of stuff leading up, like they're really in depth, like deep thoughts type. Of, 
a little, some could have been cut. Like there's a lot I feel like that could have been cut, but I read it so quick that it didn't bug me. I will argue that besides the genre being dark academia, it is also literary, which is known for having issues in pacing, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to like make up for the fact that it deals with language in like a very beautiful kind of way. And I will say that like, if this were another book written by a different author, I think the pacing would have bothered me a lot more, but I tend to like Donna Tartt's like wordiness because I feel like it's very descriptive, but I still agree some things were just too much. Did you like the Goldfinch? Yes, and that one could have been a lot shorter. Did you like it? <laughs> Not really. Okay, because I hate <laughs> the Goldfinch. I think that's one of my least favorite oh. books I have ever read. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just way too long. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sarah, I think you would hate that book too. Like, um, I read the synopsis and thought this could be cut. <laughs> like, oh, I, was like, I was like <laughs> I, I'm not gonna like this book if the I synopsis is too much for me like I don't no, think you would like I, it I at all like picking nah. people who would hate it you are probably my number one that's like just don't even try it don't do it what what makes you say that is it just the wordiness it's so long and so pointless and the characters are uh, horrible and they are, okay. are so unlikable like they're not even like these ones where there's a chance like they can make you root for them a little bit like no they are it's the worst and it's stupid. Like nothing is happening until the end where all of a sudden like twists and you're like, what is going on? Like this does not fit with the rest of the book at all. Sorry, tangent, but I just think you, that none of that would vibe with you. You're like, no. But so I did on my TBR, it. but it's like way down in my TBR. Cause I got a lot of other books that I think I would read. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Laura, oh, gosh, Laura and likes. Laura likes Sally Rooney, like me. And I feel like me and Laura kind of appreciate a complex character and like getting mm. into their head psychologically. And so like, that's why even though I didn't like, there were things I didn't like about the Goldfinch, like I appreciate it. And when the secret history, like I really don't mind the pacing because like, it's so interesting for me to analyze like these characters psychologically and their actions. But I feel like this one, there's so much more going on with the characters. Like they're actually there's something fascinating plot going on too, where yeah. you're analyzing these characters within this really intense, weird, like fascinating situation that they're in. But I feel like with the goldfinch, it's not like it's he, nothing that he does is that interesting. Like you don't really care. You're like, okay, like <laughs> we're just following you along through life while you pretty much just mess everything up and have no idea what you're doing. And you're pretty dumb. I'm like that's just kind of how it felt to me and I'm like this is so boring you know I do I do like a wordy book um Charles I, I Dickens like man. I, uh, Charles Dickens uh a bit uh, what is it? a little life a little life oh my gosh there's so much of it where it's just like they're just going through every days but I have to really like the characters but yes, yeah, Sarah, I... you confuse me because you liked. <laughs> I haven't figured you out, but because because you really liked Arquita Davina, Davina, mm -hmm. and, and that, Great and, Expectations. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. I like Great Expectations, and but... I liked Pip uh, yeah. towards yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah, and and so like to me, like I had trouble getting through Arquita Davina, and this, but this book is like like a page turner. I and liked Arcadia. <laughs> I like the I like the character. But I think for you it's the opposite. Like Arcadia Davina was a page turner and this one was hard to, to get through. Yeah, Arcadia was a page turner for me. And I you know what? You know what? Sometimes you know you just vibe. You just vibe with a book <laughs> and you just kind of go with it. You know, you just connect whatever whatever that is. I I connected um with that book quite a bit. It's weird. See, I read that one in a day too. And I feel like, sorry, I wasn't on the live show, but yeah. I thought that the parts with Orchidia in the past, I was quite interested in. But when you jump to the future, I just didn't care. I was, I was very, mm. I didn't care about those parts at all. So that was my issue with the pacing is like, if it would have been all in the past with Orchidia, I would have been much more fascinated by that book. Yeah. Yeah, I was, 
like sometimes with a book I'm all about it I'm all about a good scene and that tree like her becoming the tree I just like it, it just it just kind of enchanted me a lot I don't know what to say yeah maybe it's like Kristen said and it's to do with like psychology or something and how we respond to characters yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll I think I'll kind of go into something um after about about something in the book that I want to talk about but we'll get okay. to it <laughs> okay so do you guys do you want to jump into top shelf discussions yeah, now let's we, do it. okay so first let's look at guess this. yeah so Becca had some predictions. Um, she said that I would be top shelf. Angela, maybe. I think after her comments about the pacing, I, I'm. Oh, and she also said uh, she told us she said she, she thinks it's a no. Mm-hmm. She likes if we're yeah if we're villains better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I feel like if it is top shelf, like you just kind of know in your bones, like there's no doubt about it. So I agree, uh, or I understand what Angela said. <clears throat> Okay, and yeah. then um, Laura, yes. Sarah, no. <laughs> and Stephanie, maybe. Okay. Well, let's let's see. Kristen, she was a firm yes on you, so why don't you go first? <laughs> okay, um, me and Angela are actually in agreement on this one. Um, I feel like before I reread this book, it was a top shelf read for me. But I think on like rereading it, like there's so much that I appreciate and respect about it. Like I, I love for the same reason Laura does, like the impact that Donna Tart had on me psychologically. <laughs> um, but I don't think that it makes up for like some of the issues that I had um, with the pacing. And honestly, I just kept trying to decide if it was top shelf or not. And I couldn't. And so I feel like, um, with other books, I just knew. And actually, mm-hmm. Angela mentioned if we were villains, and I was kind of thinking the same thing, like comparing it in my head to that book and how much more I liked it. So, not a top shelf read. Woohoo! I'm Me? surprised. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I'm surprised too. Um, it was a top shelf read for me. I just thought, like, I thought one, like, I. I just thought it was so disturbing. Like, I don't think I can read this book again. It was just like, I was telling everyone who was going around while I was reading it, I was like, I'm reading this book and like, it's messing with me and I'm just feeling anxious all the time. And like, (laughs) like, 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 it's with me all the time. And like, when I'm not reading it, I'm thinking about it. And like, (laughs) um, so I, 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 I think it was top shelf, but I don't think I can read it again. Um, but I did like, I did really connect, um, to the characters, especially to, to Richard. And I was really rooting for their friendship. And I think that's what made me so invested in it. Um, but I just thought, it was so interesting um and that it sort of um humanized these really violent acts because i think that we are so interested in the psychopath in society and we're so interested in othering and that makes sense because we don't want to see that in ourselves but we're so interested in the psychopath, but there are a lot of killings and a lot of horrible things that are done in the world by people who are just like us. And this showed how that could happen. And um, that's why it is top shelf for me. Okay, I'll I'll go. (laughs) So, So no, it is not a top shelf book for me. But let me just start with the likes, okay? I'll start with things I liked about the book. So one, I like the amount of research that went into the book. Um, I thought that um, Donna Tartt has very good, um, like, reference, like references and popular culture in um, Greek mythology, Greek culture, um, and in um, languages and linguistics as well. I thought that, you know, 
she she did her thing there um and then okay so i liked that the characters were not necessarily like rewarded for their bad behavior <laughs> and that it was a tragedy for them because i don't like I, I felt like something had to happen to them. Like I, I didn't feel sympathetic for them for carrying the burden of what they did because I didn't see accountability for it, but that's just what I thought about it. But I do. I, so I do like how their fates sort of played out in that sense. Um, and I liked Greek mythology as well. Okay. So like I'll get into the dislikes. Speaking of Greek mythology, I wanted like so much more about the Dionysian like um, mysteries. I wanted more about um, the event that sort of took place. Um, I understand that Richard was getting information from um, others who were just so like they lost control of their um, cognition, it seemed, and lost control of what they were doing. So he didn't get a very accurate depiction of like what that event was like. There was a lot of gaps, a lot of things that were misunderstood about that. I just wanted to know like what happened and exactly like why they committed themselves so much to this event to the point where they are spilling like pig pig's blood on themselves and to purify their blood. So I wanted more about that because I felt that if anything was going to sort of make me um, see where they were coming from, it would be more of an understanding of what they thought they were accomplishing like through that, um, not just for that event specifically, but Dionysian mysteries like comprehensively so i had to do a lot of like outside research like wikipedia and that sort of thing so i i wanted i wanted that so much more and i did want more of that in the maidens as well um but i just i wanted more of like the that sort of like mythological aspect of it and i think that would have helped me enjoy the book quite a bit more um, I already talked about the accountability, like, or lack of for their actions. I thought it was so long. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I just think it could have been just shorter. Um, I listened to the audiobook for the second half of the book, and I read the book for the first half because I just wasn't going to finish it if I didn't listen to the, to the audiobook. I needed something where I could, like, speed up the speed and speed up the reading speed. Um, for me to get through it, um, but I didn't like the narration very it was much. Strange. I don't know. It, it was weird. Awkward. It was so yeah. strange. Um, but reading, listening to it like at a fast pace sort of helped. Um, very strange narration. Um, and oh, I just I couldn't forgive Richard for not getting out when I thought he had the opportunity to just like to leave everything. But I know that we're just supposed to um, see like how Richard was enamored, how he wanted to be part of the group, how being part of the group sort of allowed him to feel special and feel special with Julian and um, how easily like you can get influenced by others and their perspective. If you think that there's like a larger, um, a larger story at the end of it but i just wanted him to like just just go away but then we wouldn't have the story that we had right so yeah um uh, there's there's a there's a few other things i just i wish i liked the characters a little bit more but that could just be me like i don't know if enneagram one like i uh, would mesh with the characters all that well um and i thought the pretentiousness of the characters it just oh it just made me like so angry like throughout <laughs> it i was just like oh, i just hated it i hate the oh my gosh and i i didn't like I, I i don't i don't connect with the um the wealth sort of like component of it like when i went to school i went i i did um I did medical school. I was around a lot of um, students who came from wealthy backgrounds and I felt like such a out outcast. And so in that sense, I sort of related to Richard. I just, 
it, it just brought me back to that. And I didn't like that vibe very much. So yeah, for me, no, it was not top shelf read. But I appreciate the book as what it is in, um, in Dark Academia. And I talked way too long, but yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> okay, so I actually feel like it's probably not a top shelf for me, even though I really enjoyed it. I Obviously, I flew through it. I read it very, very quickly. Um, there were some tropes used in it that I'm just not a huge fan of, and that always bugs me in books. So it's not necessarily that the way she did them was poor. I think she probably did them very well. I just hate that. I am very, it, it tends to bug me in books that like drinking too much and getting on drugs and those things becoming a huge problem. And like, that's what we're trying to do. Like, I just have never really enjoyed that. I don't like incest in books. That's another thing that I don't really like. Um, so I just think a lot of the, the little tropes that she used in there aren't something that I enjoy. Also, I hate when someone lies about stuff, like how at the beginning Richard was lying about his family and lying about all this. And like, there's a chance he's going to get caught in these lies and they're just so stupid and pointless. Yeah. Like, I hate that trope in books too. It just bugs me. Um, so that's, that's some of my, some of my issues. I, I would have liked more of this Greek, like, event, I guess. I don't even know what you would call what they did. Um, I would have liked more on that, too. That would have been really fun. Um, but overall, I actually really did enjoy it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was a super fun book. I loved getting in those characters' heads. I loved how messed up it was. I was rooting for them to get away with it. And it was just, I don't know, I really, really enjoyed it. So it wasn't quite a top shelf, but I still actually really liked it quite a bit. So, Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys think that we have discussed um, everything that we need to, then um, I'll go ahead and end it. Are we okay. good? Okay. okay. Um, just a reminder okay. that our next book is going to be Christmas Days. Christmas Days times christmas, christmas days. days i think <laughs> and it'll be uh december the 28th uh 29th wednesday at 12 30 est and we will see you in the next one see bye, you bye.